Hey guys, it's William at Presto Photo, and today I'm going to show you how to create a map for your custom photo book. Let's get started. So with the loss of Aperture and iPhoto in the iOS 1013 update, there's not really a great way to add a map to your custom photo book anymore. But we have a solution, don't worry. So there's a couple options to choose from here. The first and best option in my opinion is going to be Google Maps, and the other is going to be actually to use the Maps module inside Lightroom Classic. So we'll start here with Google Maps. So of course, first thing we're going to do is jump over into Google Maps in your browser of choice. And we're going to come up here to the menu tab and come down to your places. Next, we'll go over to maps and you'll see I've already played around with this a little bit, but I'll show you guys from the beginning. So we'll come down to the bottom here and select create map. That's going to open up a new tab and you can come over here and name your map. We'll call this Glacier National Park. And you can add a description if you want. We'll just call this photo tour. We're gonna save that, and we'll just go ahead and find something in the area. Let's say Apgar Visitor Center, that'll work. So you'll see after we typed this in, it's already gonna pick this spot for us, but if you just wanted to find a spot on your own, you can zoom out and go wherever you want. Anyways, we'll go ahead and come down here to the Apgar Visitor Center and just click Add to Map, simple as that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pick another spot. So you can choose any location on the map that's already marked, or if you wanna set your own location, you can just come right up here to the add a marker button, click that and drop your marker anywhere. We'll call this pier at Lake McDonald. And you can add a description here too if you want, but I don't really need to, so I'm just gonna save that as is. Next, since this is a popular photo spot, I'm just gonna click style here and change the icon of this to the camera icon. Okay, so you'll notice over here, now that we're adding locations to our map, uh, we're getting a little list going. We can actually change this if we want and we can call it Glacier National Park Photo Tour or whatever you want. Uh, it's totally up to you, obviously. And we'll just go ahead and add a couple more spots to our list here just to give us something to work with. So we'll add this Lake McDonald Lodge and we'll just come up here to Trail of the Cedars and go ahead and throw that in too. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to map a route using this technique. So we're gonna just go ahead and start with this pier at Lake McDonald and we're gonna route directions to here. I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the Apgar Visitor Center for this first one, you do actually have to type it. Uh, you can't just click on it, which is a little bit frustrating, or maybe you could actually come and click on a point down here. But for routing any further locations, we can actually just come and click add destination and then come over here and click on our point. And we'll just go ahead and add the rest here. Now you can see here that it actually routed us all the way around Glacier National Park. Uh, that's just because this road is closed this time of year, but typically this would choose the, the closest route. So this is a great way to set a driving route. Uh, also helpful for planning your trips, but uh, you, can, you can go in in hindsight and just create a little map of where you went if you went on a trip somewhere. Um, the other thing that you can do with this that's really cool, and actually I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck this so that it's not as much to look at. We can click the draw a line tool here and choose add a line or shape. So what this is gonna let us do is pick different points and we're just gonna kinda outline highway two here. And we'll come into the park and we're gonna come back to here. Now you could just leave this how it is, right? Without uh, picking a point here and you would just have a line and you can change the color of your line, but we're gonna go ahead and close this in and it's gonna create this polygon. We'll call this part of Glacier National Park, and you can add a description, but I'm just gonna save it as is. So now we can come to our style options here and we can play with the colors. We'll just go ahead and make it a nice yellow. And you can play with the transparency if you want. So if you wanted to go ahead and make it completely opaque, you can, or if you wanna do somewhere in the middle, or if you just wanna have the lines and you don't wanna show the uh, fill color there, you can do that too. You can also adjust the border width, width and make it as big or small as you want. Let's take that transparency down so you can see it. There you go. 
and we'll just leave it right in there bring this up a little bit and that is it so once you've finished creating your map you can come up here to the uh, little menu tab and down at the bottom you'll see print map and this is actually really nice because if you are making a photo book uh, you can choose your size here eight and a half by 11 is a real popular size so we'll just leave it with that uh, and then you could choose your output type. So at Presto Photo, we have different options for creating a photo book. You can upload your own PDF, or you can actually use our online editor and up, drag and drop images from there. So here we'll just leave it on PDF and you just click print and you're done. Okay, so that's it for Google Maps. Next, we're gonna look at the Adobe Lightroom Classic Maps module and how to create a map in there. So go ahead and launch Lightroom. And once that's loaded up, you can see I've already got a few spots picked out here. I'll just go ahead and delete these uh, just to make it easier to look at for us here. This way you can see too from the beginning. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is pick any picture and you'll just select a photo at your film strip down at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna to come to a point, so I know where this is. This is uh, a place in Glacier National Park where I really like to go. And I'm just gonna select a photo, come up here and right click and click on add GPS coordinates to selected photos. So you'll see now we've got a little pin here and it shows us that this is the selected photo. So if I click onto a different one, it'll turn to a different color and it'll be unselected photo. So with this photo selected and with this highlighted, you can see over in our metadata here that it did actually add a GPS location to this photo. Now, Google Maps is actually gonna do the same thing. If you add a, add a point to the map, it'll give you the location. Uh, and you can actually assign photos to those locations too, but I wanted to make sure to point this out because I think that this is a really uh, neat way to show off where you, where you were for these photos um, and you can actually find the GPS location or GPS coordinates of your photos and it can it can make a really nice caption for your book. So anyways, that's over here if you want it. Uh, the other thing is if you wanted to add multiple photos to an area, let's just choose these three for example and we'll go put drop them in the parking lot here. You'll see that it's gonna show that three photos were taken here. So now you can zoom out and it'll kind of compress things down or condense things down um, so you can see it went from being one and three to now there's four photos in this area. So that is kind of one drawback of doing it in Lightroom. Uh, personally, I think my preference would be to do it in Google Maps, but everyone's different. It's up to you. Uh, I know one complaint with the Google Maps option is that uh, you have all of the other default information there. Uh, so you see Glacier National Park and St. Mary and all these, all these other options. Uh, and even if you change your base map, you still are gonna have all of that information on here. So it can, it can look a little cluttered. Uh, whereas back in Lightroom, you don't have all that information. You can bring it up if you want. Uh, like if you put it in the hybrid view, it'll show you that. Uh, if you put it in the roadmap view, you lose the terrain, but you still have the, uh, the location names. Or if you just put it in satellite, then you don't have to worry about any of that extra information and it can make it a lot easier to look at. So the other thing with Lightroom is there's not exactly a good way to export this. Uh, so the best option really is just to take a screenshot of it and do it that way. Anyways, that wraps up how to create a custom map for your photo book. And if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more content like it, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.